All right, Dolphin fans, how's everybody doing today on this fine August 1st? I'm going to be the first one to say, I don't know where you're living, but it cooled off where I am. So I'm 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 happy, man. July is over. <laughs> July is over. Now this 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 fine young gentleman that you see on your screen here is he's, he's my buddy Trey. Trey Trey has been a fan of the Flying Fluffy Hockey Channel for a couple of minutes there, however long it's been. And uh, we've been talking a little bit, you know, you know, guys, I got this channel going now, Flying Fluffy Football, and uh, Trey's a football fan, and and so we're we're, we're going to see how this works. If if Trey is good enough, we're, he knows enough about hockey, um, I'll just send this part to Stu. I'm going to, rep we're replacing Stu with Trey is what we're doing here. No. <laughs> that that part's don't, don't just for Stu. Don't send the army at me, man. <laughs> Dude's got an army. Yeah, no, no, no. I only said that so I could cut that clip out and send it to him. So, no, Stu, Stu and I are enjoying our vacation um, immensely. But football is getting ready to start up here. And like I said, I, I've got this channel, Flying Fluffy Football, going. And what I'm trying to do is is get together the same collection of content um, over here that I have on over on the Hockey Channel uh, because I, I – I, I like being insane, and the Panthers didn't quite make me insane enough, so now I'm going to go ahead and cover the Dolphins full-time as well. So, Trey, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for joining us. And what we're going to do here with Trey, Trey is just going to give us a little bit of an introduction to himself. I'm going to ask him some questions. You guys know how I roll here around here. Um, I'm, I, I sort of like to do these things as an interview style, and then especially when we don't have games. There's no – no, no. we need games, bro. Bro, I'm dying, okay? That. <laughs> uh, it's it's I, I I in fact when I was um creating this stream and I was looking at my banners so I'm looking at it right now the last banner for Stu and I was June 14th and it's the review and I'm just looking at that score of Knights nine Panthers three and I'm like I need games this is this is killing me so Trey give us give everybody a little introduction to who you are how you are how you what, what kind of football fan you are just just go ahead and go for it. I was ready to talk about football, and you bring up that nine to three. <laughs> Forget and I said anything. That's it. I've told I'm them. Trying to. <laughs> trying to. Hey, look, if it makes you feel uh, any better, I still cry at least once a week on the podcast for members. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Flying Fluffy Football, the number one doll fan podcast. Mm, I know you opened up with a stew joke, but I was already prepared to do that. Right. Gotcha. And it had to, it had to snap me back into football. Yeah, Jeez. there we go. Uh, it's this. So, uh, what was the question? Jesus, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that, that's okay. That's all right. Um, basically, just introduce yourself to to the fans because they they know my dumbass. We're just trying to get right. you to, okay. you know, what kind of football, like like, what's your football fan history, your when? teams, and and what kind of fan are you? Are you the quiet stoic type? Or are you throw the remote at the TV type, or are you grab the TV off the wall and throw the TV kind of kind of fan? I, um, depending on who you talk to, uh, <laughs> the worst of the kind of fan that you could have, and not any that you listed. I start making fun of my teams when they lose and when bad things happen. And actually, the only team I don't do that with is the Panthers. Gotcha. Everybody else, like, I actually just saw because it was uh, posted on one of the college football pages. Um, I went to Florida State. So okay. we had sorry. the one year against – we had the one year against Georgia Tech uh, when we were going for the field goal. And it was a tie game. So we make it, we win, we miss it, we go to overtime, no big deal. They block it and house it. Right. And I'm laughing my ass off from the block <laughs> on as they're running that shit back. And I knew they were running it back as soon as they blocked it. And I'm just laughing my ass off. And when you're with a bunch of Florida State fans and that happens, you're not yeah. the most popular guy. They, they, they're like, yeah. did this guy go to Florida or something? They're like, no, no, he went right. with us. And right. he's just like that. And I'm like that with uh, almost all the teams I root for except for the Panthers. The Panthers – and it's still not break the TV or anything like that. Um, I'll get real excited on one of our goals, right? right. I'll yell and something like that. And then, like, when the other team scores, I'm just like. Right, right, right. 
Uh, but so it, it's a, it's a little mixture of stoic, little mixture of crazy, and I'll troll myself. And maybe it's a defense mechanism. Maybe it's you know you can't talk more shit about my team than I can. Right. right. Um, maybe there's a little bit to that. Maybe it's a little bit of just uh, trying to. I don't know, put on a happy face. I, I really don't know why I do it, but I do it. I, I'm i considered an asshole by a lot of my friends when <laughs> our team Joy, is hey, that, that makes two of us. I'm considered an asshole by a lot of my friends. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> so it should work out just fine. Yeah, um, you know, you, I, you bring up the Florida State thing and, and field goals and kicking, and I'm, I'm a Miami Hurricane oh. fan, so... I, I the there, there's some history there for you with kicking in Florida State, where you know it 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 doesn't go well for you guys, unfortunately. You know the funny thing is, I, I I'm a Florida State fan now because I went there, but I right. grew up a Hurricanes fan because um I was a big wrestling fan. Now I'm a wrestler, and The Rock went to Miami, so I'm like, oh okay, we're gonna root for Miami. And right. I was at wide left. Mm. Yeah, Jeez. I was at that one, but I was so happy, Jeez. right? Because I was a right. Miami fan. And then yeah, I yeah, yeah. Like Florida, end up finding out the difference between private school tuition and public school tuition, and that's when we became a seminal. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I can understand that. So, what about your pro pro football? Give us, give us, give us your pro football uh, preferences in a nutshell. So, I started with the Dolphins. Um, I was born in 88, so obviously, you know, as I'm starting to watch football, Marino is still playing. I but... graduated in 88. Ain't that great? <laughs> you so oh, Marino's, <laughs> Marino's playing, but I more know him as the guy from Ace Ventura than as right. the Dolphins quarterback, but that also makes him cooler to a five, six, seven-year-old kid. Is yeah. Oh, hey, it's the dude in Ace Ventura, and he's the local team. This guy's awesome. Right. Then he retires. Um, and that's not when it stopped um, because coincidentally, my first ever uh, man crush uh, watching Sports Center was Ricky Williams at Texas. Yeah, yeah. And then he was on the Saints for a bit and then gets traded to the Dolphins. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is great. Right. Coincidentally, um, my parents are both from West Virginia. Oh. So all over Pat White and Steve Slayton when they were there. And then oh, the man. Dolphins get Pat White. And I'm going to, this is going to be my first hot take eight minutes in to this relationship. Pat White was ahead of his time. <laughs> if Pat you White. Know, if, if his body could have handled. Later, yeah. If, if his body could have handled what his heart wanted him to do, mm -hmm. he could have, he, but he just, his, he was not the biggest of guys. You know, but, me, me and my yeah, friends Pat, always, uh, my friends who are Dolphin fans, we always, uh, Joe, wherever we say Pat White, we always say rest in peace right after it. Yeah. Yeah. That poor Because that Steeler game was, and, and that really would be the only thing. But as far as like ability and what he did right. and his skill set, that is exactly what everyone's looking for now. Yeah. But it would be the same common theme right now that you have for the Dolphins is the health of the quarterback. I get that. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, he was ahead of his time. I, I, but, I, I, that's a, that's a, that's a solid hot take. You know what I mean? I mean, when you think about why we drafted him, you know, I was watching a video from somebody else. I can't remember who it was. It was really recent. And they were talking about um, how the running back position has now become so devalued. And I left a comment because what he left out was how this all started was the Ronnie and Ricky running the wildcat. And, once they kind of figured out the Wildcat team said, okay, but let's get a quarterback that can do this. And then they had all the RPOs and everything. And that led to now you've got these running quarterbacks all over the place and the running backs are just a dime a dozen. And Pat White was our attempt that, you know, we kind of went for it first. We, we, we swung and missed. Um, not completely first, obviously you had your Randall Cunningham's and Warren Moon's and Steve Young's. You had your running quarterbacks before that, but you know, after after we did that wild card wildcat season, um, that's really changed things a lot in terms of the landscape of what quarterbacks are expected to do, what running backs are expected to do. 
Now, Pat White, that's a hell of a name from the past. Another name I'll give you from the past, and this is this is only because this is um, this is a story I'm going to tell in a book. My brother, my brother from another mother, he um he was sold, and I mean sold. He was hardcore sold. He got a six figure um separation bonus from the air force when he got out and what i'm about to tell you is the truth he spent the majority of that six figure bonus two locations he spent it at the track and what he didn't lose at the track he spent on dante culpepper cards because he was convinced that he was going to be the next marino <laughs> hey i um it's not his fault i i, I blame <laughs> I blame the Dolphins medical staff for him making that decision. If they just passed Drew Brees' physical, he I never mean, would have been on the bill. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> three no, doctors, no, though, bro. Been. Three doctors all looked at all the films, and all three said, yeah, Brees is done. Go with Culpepper. All three of them. Can you believe that? So maybe, maybe uh, Hey, maybe the doctor in New Orleans was day drinking, and it that's, worked that's, out. This is possible. This is possible. Not like, look, I mean, Breeze wouldn't have been able to do in Miami what he did in New Orleans because it's Miami and, you know, we're still, we're still waiting. I mean, Don Shula is dead. I don't know if you know about the Mercury Morris curse. Apparently, um, Mercury Morris, I think, from Louisiana or somewhere down there, he was real yeah. into like voodoo and whatnot. And he hated Don Shula so much that after he was done, he put a curse on the Dolphins and said they're never going to win another Super Bowl as long as Shula is alive. And rest in peace, Don is is gone now. So and let let's let's go, let's let's right. go. The curse should be over, right? And now uh, to to flip back to the Dolphins, we, we win a Super Bowl. We can't even keep a cornerback healthy. Mm. Fun <laughs> no. Mercury Moore fact. Lost his Super Bowl ring twice. Oh, jeez. He lost his Super Bowl ring. They gave him a new one. It wasn't even they found the old one. They gave him a new one. Lost that one, too. No. Yeah. Wow. Mercury Moore lost two Super Bowl rings. <laughs> wow. Jeez. That's, that's, spe that's special. That's special. So, all right, so... So everybody is clear because the level of Dolphin fan, NFL fan, give us, give us, give us where you are with that in terms okay. of. Your... Um, yeah, I kind of went on a side tangent there. I consider That's myself a... a casual Dolphin fan, casual doll fan, um, hardcore football fan. Um, I, I don't know why it never clicked with the Dolphins. to Because like... they haven't won anything while you've been alive. No, because that wouldn't explain <laughs> me with basketball. Um, okay. But I, it just never really clicked with any football, NFL team, rather. Um, right. Like, I have my teams I like. I have my teams I don't like. Um, I've, I've lived here. This is my second stint living in New Orleans. If you add all the years together, it's eight years. Um, covered the team for some years. So obviously, you know, I, I have a like for the Saints. Um, but... That's starting to dwindle. <laughs> that's because <laughs> that's because of the city. My love right, for the right. city is just eef, by the day. Yeah, and it bleeds into the sports teams. Um, yep. But been following the Dolphins more in recent years, um, and I, I noticed something. And I'm not going to get too far into it because there's no need. But um, you can notice two very stark differences in, and I'm talking about the bad, but still stark differences between the doll fan base and the saints fan okay. base. Okay. And the bad about doll fans, and this is really the worst thing I can say about it is they are the product of what a city like Miami would breed and Miami similar to LA Vegas is going to find this out soon whenever they have some down years. In these cities where you can count on all your fingers and toes, things to do, that right. team needs to perform. And right. if that team doesn't perform, they're not going to care. So, 
I totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> you were talking about the good, the bad comparisons. Okay. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. So I took vitamins right before we did this. So what that breeds is casual fans, right? right they right, don't, right. they're not so gung ho about the teams. If they're winning, great. If not, it's okay because I can still go to the beach. Okay, the reason yeah. why yep. your cities like Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Green Bay are die hard with your win or loss is because yeah, kind of have to be. All right. you can do is uh, watch football, drink beer, <laughs> right? Play with me. That's all you can do in those cities. Right. And 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 that's when you see people. I know where we got our two camps on Tua, but when you see what people from the anti Tua camp are saying. And just the content of what they're saying, right? They're just that casual fan. It's like, okay, you you don't understand the nuances of pass protection and how there's not enough time for receivers to run routes. That's why the Dolphins run almost exclusively underneath stuff because that's the only time right. you need yeah. time to streak on down the field, right? Um, coincidentally, the knock on Tua coming out of college, besides the hip injuries, but talk about as far as ability. People thought he could only throw go routes because he was just throwing lollipops to Jerry Judy all day long. And he spends right. a couple of years behind a historically bad O line and it becomes, I don't think he can throw far. It's like, no, he <laughs> can't. You just got to give him time. Yeah. But that's like the worst of doll fans. Right, right. Saints fans, you know, good old Louisiana. And um, I could say this because coincidentally, Jameis Winston, man of color, was playing for the Saints last year. If Tua was on the Saints, the issue would not be, I don't know if he can throw deep. The issue would not be he's injury prone. The issue would be two things. Hey, Brown, and he went to Bama. Really? And I swear to you. Wow. Like, dude, there was nothing Jameis could do. Nothing from the previous year mattered. Nothing from about who was hurt mattered. Yeah, One of yeah, the yeah. games that he lost against Carolina, not only were all the players out because of COVID, half the coaches were out because of COVID. Jeez. And, like, none of it ever mattered. Meanwhile, Andy Dalton throws two pick sixes against the Cardinals. Saints lose by eight for those counting right. at home. <laughs> Perfectly fine. Nothing, nothing. Wow. They were sad to see him leave. And – this is as far as I'll go with this, because I, like I said, I know this isn't popular on the internet to get into this subject, regardless of what side you're on. I think the reason why Jameis is the backup with the Saints this year is because no matter what Derek Carr will do, you ain't going right. to hear the fans say put in the backup. They won't. Right. They just won't. Is the best security wow. blanket Derek Carr could have. Wow. Well, look, hey, look, you live there, so you would know. You know what but, I mean? And, and I would see it because, like, I follow the Saints page and I follow the Dolphins page. And you'll right. see it when you're scrolling down Facebook and you just see People the comment really? section. It's like, this is completely different. This wow. is completely different. And it's not everybody, of course right. not. But when yeah. I say the worst thing I see on the Dolphins stuff is right. this, and right. the worst thing I see on the Saints page is this, that's what I'm saying. Is the yeah. Dolphins' worst it's so much better than the Saints. Yeah, work. yeah, that, that that's a big difference. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right. I I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it never crossed my mind. You know, especially in this day, it just never crossed my mind. But, um, I I believe it. I mean, you know, there's there's, there's things I see about Tua that, I mean, and I was talking about this on the podcast today. I mean, there was a legit hardcore argument last week on Twitter. And what happened was the Miami Dolphins uh, Twitter account put out a short clip of a nice long pass from Tua to I think it was Waddle. I think it was Waddle. Mm -hmm. And it was professionally edited. And at the end, I don't remember if they were slowed it up or sped it. I can't remember which way it was. But Omar Kelly, who's been a Dolphin writer for forever, right? He came out on his show with somebody else that he does and tweeted about it, saying that the Dolphins purposefully edited the throw 
to make it look better than it was because it was really behind them and the receiver had to slow down to catch the ball. <laughs> and this is a throw in practice in July with no pads on. And Pan, uh, uh, Dolphins Twitter was killing itself. They were killing each other. I mean, legit, just some of the things that you see people saying back and forth to each other. And it's like, it's practice. What, 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 and they're serious. You, you can't, you can't tell them, dude, it's, it's, it's practice. Relax. You know what I mean? I, right. I, people have really gotten to taking this stuff. Um, really 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 seriously and and you know it's one of the reasons why for a while i didn't want to do dolphins content specifically mm. because you know the, the tour thing um last year on twitter i waded into the waters just a little bit you know what i mean and i mean you can't have an opinion either way about tour you're gonna get right. nobody there the people that agree with you they ignore you the only people that are going to pay attention to you the people that are going to you don't know football and, and, and all of these, no matter what you say, you know what I mean? You, you can yeah, be I've been guilty of that on internet <laughs> comments uh, once or twice. But you know what? Sometimes you'll read something and you're already hot to begin with. And right. then you'll catch something Right. Else. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, even though no one's necessarily talked to you yet, you're just reading the comments and you're, already, you're just coming in hot. I'm guilty of that too. We, we've all done that. No, sure. We we we've all done that. Um, in 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 spaces, but the dolphin fan base is 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 a special fan base, man. I remember, um, because you know I went to games at the Orange Bowl before you were born. Jesus Christ, I'm old. And we used to walk back. You know, it was a long drive. It wasn't just like like a nice parking lot, like right there, like right next to Joe Robbie Stadium or whatever the hell they call it this week. But you know, you would have to you would have to park far away, and you'd have to walk in Miami. And during the Jets Jets weeks, any any Jets game that was in Miami, on the walk back to the car, there was going to be two things that happened guaranteed. Number one, at least ten percent of the women were going to take off their shirts, and mm. there was and then there was going to be fights between the drunken fans. And I just, I just remember as a kid watching that and thinking, even though my, cause you're not wrong about the, the fickleness of South Florida fans and, and the fact that, Hey, I can just go to the beach. I now, now it's like, I could just take the boat out and satellite and watch the game on the boat. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's crazy, but even those fans, even what you would call like the casual fans, are rabid about it you know what i mean it's right. it's 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 i don't want to say it's a unique fan base but i haven't experienced I one what's that i i i think it is um and i didn't mean to cut you off but no, it's okay there's there's another there's another piece to that puzzle with dolphin on top of being a town like la and vegas they're battered and by that, I mean right. post Marino, the yeah. quarterback situation. <laughs> um, you just talked about Brother Gene and his Dante Culpepper cards. Um, right. and that's right. part of it. Uh, Pat White, <laughs> rest in peace. That's part yeah. of it. Henning right. given Sunday not working out. That's part of it. The fact that Jay Fiedler, who was okay, is by far the best quarterback between Marino and Tua, that's a part of it. And also, you're told when Marino retires, oh, well, of course, it's going to take a long time to replace a guy like that. And right. you hear the same thing when Elway retires and Favre retires. And I don't know if you noticed yet, but those teams have already gotten yeah. to have a couple nice quarterbacks <laughs> set. And they all said, hey, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a long time. It's going to be right. a long time. Now, if the Patriots get something before the Dolphins – then it's time to really be pissed because their great quarterback just left. But I really do think the Dolphins have a great quarterback. I just think he needs to be able to stay healthy. Is part of that mm. him? Sure. I can't deny the injury history that he has. Just be thankful yeah, yeah. that it's not the same body part getting hurt over and over before anyone right. says two concussions. I'm talking about his entire injury history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First it was a hip, then it was a knee, now it's a head. Right. 
in a way that's better. I mean, I know it sounds like, oh, his whole body's getting ripped apart, but in a way that is better. If it was the same shoulder or the same knee, right, right, that's, right, right. that's yeah. an issue. He's the Aaron right. Eckblad of the Dolphins. Right. And, <laughs> and it's a team game. Everybody has to remember that. I had the yeah. most, one of the comments you'll see most often regarding the Tua debate is, should have drafted Herbert. Should have drafted Herbert. Right, right, right. Do things with that. First off, nobody, absolutely nobody, was saying Justin Herbert before the draft. Right. Nobody. Right, because right, right. he was kind of a ghost up there in Oregon. You really didn't know about him, good or bad, right? Yeah. And that yeah. makes it mysterious to draft a guy like that. But the second thing is, if Herbert had been behind this O-line, He'd be getting ripped to shreds from the fans just the same. He'd be getting blamed just the same because it goes back to that L.A., Vegas type casual town where the right. quarterbacks can get all the credit, the quarterbacks right. can get all the blame. So yeah, while yeah. Justin Herbert getting beat to shit behind this O-line just like Tua did in this universe, he would get blamed in that other universe. And they're probably talking about, oh, man, Tua's throwing them bombs to Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Look what he's doing with Austin Eckler. It's like, right. yeah, he is all those dudes. And the very next first round pick after Justin Herbert was Rashawn Slater, who's now their best offensive lineman. And right. the Dolphins are trying. They're they're two they're two spots away from having a good line. They have they have left tackle, they have center, right. they have right guard. Yeah. They need a left guard and a right yeah. tackle. Yeah, and 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 that leads me to remember, you know. I mean, it, the season hadn't been over five minutes, and Greer said that Eichenberg and Jackson are going to get, they're going to get another chance, and that's what they're getting. I mean, we didn't. I mean, we got a couple of guys that can step in in case you know one of them goes down, but those are the guys. You know what I mean? And I was I was watching Dougley do wrong before we came on, and mm -hmm. as soon as they put those pads on, it's it's all defense. Like most of the play by play is. You know, two is completing passes, but it's because they don't they don't sack them. So, like, if it's a play that would have been like a sack anyway, the defender will just ignore Tua, and then Tua will still make a throw, right? So, it's kind of funky how they do it. They don't they don't stop the play or wear flags and be like, you would have been sacked. They they continue to play. So you see these plays that well it was a completion. It's like yeah, but it would have been a sack. Um, I, I, I've ranted about it over and over and over again in the podcast in terms of, I don't understand the lack of, well, on one hand, I don't understand the lack of investment. On the other hand, I do, because they drafted Eichenberg and Jackson. And if Greer has to admit both of those guys are mistakes and go out there and spend more draft capital, you know, you never know what Ross is going to do. That's for sure. You got to think about your investment at quarterback though. And you keep right. trotting these guys out here, and what's that going to do to your investment? I mean, the first thing I I thought in my head when you said, "Oh, Greer's trotting them back out," was, "Well, did he talk to Tua about this before he said we're <laughs> we're bringing these brownies back out on the O line?" Because right. at this point, that even before talking to Mike McDaniel, I'd be like, "Hey, Tua, are, are you comfortable with the?" It, it's it's almost like wrestling, because yeah. of wrestling being predetermined and scripted, you need to be very comfortable with the person you're working with because you don't want to get dumped on your head on a power bomb. So a, a similar thing, like Tua needs to be comfortable with these people blocking for him. He needs to, that's going to affect how he's making decisions in the pocket. If he's not comfortable with people in front of him, he's going to start rushing things. He start rushing things, he starts turning the ball over. Right. And that's how mistakes right. happen without him even getting hit just because yep. he's worried about it's going to happen. Right. So right. as long as he's okay with it, uh, okay, give him another chance. But those will be the places I'm looking at. And to do somewhat of a segue, I would absolutely not be trading for superstar running backs who want giant extensions when I need to right. shore up the O-line. And, oh, by the way, to let people know that I don't think two is an angel – why would I trade for a running back who catches a lot of passes when my quarterback ignores the running back? Well, so two is not an angel. He needs yeah, to fix yeah. that. 
But yeah, why would no, I trade that, for Jonathan Taylor if Tua's not going to throw to him? No. Now, look, if we signed Dalvin Cook, that's one thing. But you, you, you speak into something I screamed about last year. Um, I mean, I would watch the film, and you would, you would, you would, you would. Tua takes two steps back, and maybe he had to scramble. Maybe he had to move out of position. Maybe he gets the ball to Hill. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he gets it to Wall. Maybe he doesn't. But like six or seven of the plays. The, the running back is over there in the middle. There's nobody near him. Not like getting shadowed by a linebacker. I mean nobody. And Tua ain't not even looking at him. And that, you're, you're exactly right on that, man. It's just like, just dump it off a couple times a game. Um, so you didn't, you weren't there during this time, but that was what Marino was so good at and why you had to cover the whole field with Marino. because he take those two steps and even if he had something deep, there'd be times when he would just dump it off to Kirby, Terry, you know, Terry Kirby, uh, Keith Byers and Tony, Tony Nathan to, to give another name. And those guys could catch the ball. And so the defense had to put a linebacker on those guys. They had to account for those guys, which took pressure off of Marino because that's one less rushing linebacker. And it worked, and that's that's something, man. You really hit on that hard. I'm glad you brought that up because that would slow some of that pass rush down if they were worried about he's going to take two steps and just dump it off the monster to whoever. Just the threat of doing that would slow things down a lot. Good, good point. Glad you brought that it, up. It's almost like ignore the fact that they changed the rules in baseball this year, but it's almost like bunting against a shift. Right. If you just send a couple bunts down the third base line, all of a sudden they can't do a shift on you because you'll do that. Right, right. Then Major League Baseball had to change the rules because modern players don't know how to bunt. Let's not get into that. <laughs> but it, it's a similar thing. Like if you just you don't have to be doing it all day. I don't need Moster getting ten catches. I mean it'd be great right. if I have him in fantasy. Yeah. But just a couple to where it keeps the defense honest. They have to put somebody over there, which means there's one less person on Tyreek or there's one less person coming at you. Right. Either way. Right. Yeah. No, either way. Perfect. I think that's a perfect way to end this one today. I like, I like, I like where we got to a nice spot of agreement. We're going to be doing more of these. Um, but I just wanted everybody to get to meet Trey, get, get an introduction to the, to the chemistry on screen. Just, this was good. It looks like it, it, this, this actually worked. Now, some some people might say, because, you know, Stu's diehard Panthers, right? But right. this time, but this might actually work not having two diehards because uh, Trey will see the game a little bit differently than I am. So uh, there may be things where I'll, I'll think I saw see something and he'll see something different. I have a feeling it's going to work that way, where a lot of times I get complaints that Stu and I agree too much. <laughs> right because we see the exact same things like 10 things can be going on and we'll be like did you see what ekblad did it's like yeah so this might actually work out <laughs> this will work out well, uh, up? apologies for my five second space out i don't know ah, if that okay. was cte or thc uh it wasn't mk ultra though i promise <laughs> That's that's okay. All my all my guests have those blockouts. So at least you got back to it. Remember, if you watch the reviews with Stu, he forgets what he says. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> he'll he'll Dude, text I me like three I'm hours gonna, later. Wait, What's that? I'm coming around the corner and I'm like, oh wait, where's the house? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, this, this, when Stu has one of those moments. Three hours after the videos went up, I'll get a text to be like, shit, this is what I was meaning to say. <laughs> <laughs> so all right trey appreciate you joining us today we're going to do this again soon we need all games right, though some kind of games bro this is killing me mm -hmm. right there's only so much fishing i can do i only got one arm you know what i mean so yeah well, all right I mean, buddy there's still a lot of news to get into so i mean we can yeah we can get into this later this week or whatever yep yep we'll work it out appreciate it and uh, yeah, everybody uh, hit, hit that subscribe button, all right? We really appreciate it, and we'll see you again real soon.